Hi folks, it's half past 10 on Saturday 17th of March and it's just started tipping it down with snow. In fact, it has been doing for a couple of hours and we've got about three inches on that. I was going to do a YouTube video tomorrow on my shelves, but instead I've decided to do one on building a sledge. It's going to be heavy snow for about another eight hours and then have light snow for another two hours after that and it's not getting above zero tomorrow so we've got perfect sledging conditions. And if like me you like to seize the opportunity because we hardly ever get any snow, get yourself some wood and I'll show you how to build a sledge. Okay so the whole reason I'm making this sledge is for these two people here. On my right I've got... Abby. Abby. On my left I've got... Caitlin. Cool. Caitlin's my daughter. Abby's her best mate. Guys, what do you want to out of a sledge? A uh, sledge. sledge. Just a sledge. Yeah, no, but what's it needs to do? A good sledge. It needs to be good. In to race. Way. So it needs to go fast? Yes. It does it need to, to, how many people does it need to fit on it? Uh, 10,000. <laughs> right. I don't think I've quite... And it needs to set up at like this speed. <laughs> okay, so I've not got that much. With a cup of tea holder. No, a tea holder. That player. I can do. Right, so it's got, we've got speed and a cup holder. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, information overload. So oh, okay, okay. it can't go lightning speed because uh, no. that's theoretically impossible. And uh, 10 million people, no, I haven't got that much of it. can make it out of lightning. Okay, at least... I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do lightning. Oh. I do wood. Uh, but we, can you paint it like the lightning? We haven't got that much time. It's oh. ten. It's half past ten on a Saturday oh. night, and we're racing okay. in the morning. So, how many people? Then a good be? race. Okay, at least, least two then. Two. two people. No three. Wait, no two or three. I think two. Yeah, two. Think three. Two you're talking normal. like bus territory for the sledge. <laughs> <laughs> so, we can ride bus. Okay, cool. It's right, so uh, yeah. so just do a quick time check for me, Ami. What's the time? Ten. Forty-two. 10.42, so when you guys get up at what, like, six. Six, six in the morning, so I've got seven hours and 18 minutes to make a super sledge that can go fast, fit two people on. Yeah, but that's if you stay up all night. If well, we'll see. I've got all night. You'll probably go yeah. like this so. half of that. Yeah, because we're going to go sledging in the morning, so like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not okay, cool. Right, guys, okay. let's do this. You, you two need a good night's sleep. Let me do the work. Could I say it's half work. an hour? No, it's um, it's quarter to eleven. If you yeah. sledging's hard work, so you guys need a good night's sleep. Get to work. Right, <laughs> right then, guys. So uh, with any good project, the first thing you need to do is a bit of research. So we just go onto Google here. Uh, what we do is just very simply type in sledge, and that comes up with some pretty good results. Okay, and that pretty much sums up the research because we're just going to make it up as we go along into the garage. All right, we'll just do a quick snow check. It's quarter past 11. Let's have a quick look outside, see how it is. No snow. Oh, I'm optimistic though, so we'll see. All right then folks, welcome to the uh, School of Sledge Building. Um, where I will teach you the principles of building a sledge. So obviously this is a two-person sledge. It's going to have to be fast, robust and easy to build. That's the whole point of this how-to. Out of the materials, common materials that we've got, I don't know, I'll, honest, I'll just see what we find. So, hi folks and welcome to the school, to the school of sledge. Building. My name's Sam and I will teach you how to build a sledge. So first off we need to determine the length of the sledge. So the sledge is like that. We're having two people on it. There's person one, there's person two. This distance here is the leg distance. So that's leg. That will be half a leg distance. The back wants to come about there so you can rest against it. Where you want the feet wanted to be butt up against something at the front there to stop you falling out the front, that's always handy. So that wants to be the stopper there. So overall, we've got 1.5 leg dif different distances of a child. So I will go and measure them, one of them now. Okay, so we've got leg length equals 0.8 meters. That means that 1.5L will be 1.2 metres. That's the length. Next thing is the width. It's just flat with a person sitting on it. 
from there to there we want. Not just the width of the hips. Now remember when you're when you're going down, hopefully about 50, 60 miles an hour for these kids. It's not just the width of say the hips because you want a bit of stability. So you need to put your hands there. So uh, really, you know, just get, get your kids sit down and put their hands on the floor and a bit of a sort of triangle there and measure that width to the outer edge of the hand. So I'll just go and do that now. Okay, so we've got 0.6 there. I've got length, width, great. So that, that's a platform. Now, as for the stop at the front and back, I kind of make that up as I go along. It's not conducive to the operation of the actual sled or the performance of it. It really just keeps the kids in, so we won't bother too much about that. So we go on to the next thing, which is the skids. Now, these are the little bits that poke out along the bottom. Now, if we take that width view and blow that up, there is the width of the sled. We got Caitlin and Ari sat on there. Like I said, hope you're going down at about 50, 60 miles an hour. We've got the snow. Okay, and because we're in the UK, snow is thin. So I'll just draw the thickness of the snow on there. Okay, so that's the thickness of the snow. The next thing we want to look at are the skids, the, two, the bits that come out now. I've actually got a sledge pop, hopping around, so I'll just use that as an example. In fact, no, I won't, because this is, well, I haven't got time to find it, and we're just making this up as we go along, and, you know, let's be honest, how hard can it be? So, with skids, what I'm assuming is the science behind it is this. It goes into the snow. So we do one either side. It also keeps it in the right direction as well, basically going straight. So uh, we put one in the middle as well. Obviously the idea with, say, roller blades is you've got the bottom of someone's boot and there's a blade. And the idea is that it's the least amount of contact with the ice as possible. So it reduces friction, in other words. So we do want some thickness there. We want to put three in. Worst case is it gets pushed into the snow so that the snow ends up sort of rubbing along the underside of the sledge, that's fine. So we'll, we'll accommodate for that as well and make sure that the underside of the sledge is nice and shiny. Uh, we might even cover it with oil just to get that good bit of uh, velocity for the kids there. Remember, more speed is more fun. And uh, let's just hazard a guess, 10 mil. That's a fairly standard, well, 12 mil is a fairly standard thickness for sort of boards and things like that. The sticky outy bit, so from there to there, uh, 20 mil. Now we don't want them to poke into the, it's got about two inches of snow out there um, and I'm going to take them out in the sticks a bit tomorrow so that uh, there's more chance of more snow there um, as well. So uh, we'll we go for 20 mil, I think that's fairly safe, I think we'll stick with 20 mil. See how we got with that. Okay, so the next thing we should do is just have a look at these skids on the side view. So we'll blow that up, front to back, the left to right. Can you see that? No, you can't see that. So on the side view, this is left to right. Again, because we're in the UK and we get naffle snow, I'll just draw the thickness there for you. Okay, so that's a realistic artist impression of the thickness of the snow that we usually get in the UK. Not sure about sides yet. There's a fire on the sledge, we want them to be able to get out the sides fairly easily, so we might leave the sides open. As for the skids, now here's the trick. When we're going for speed, so the skid wants to be nice and sloped at the front. Okay, I believe that is everything. Um, and obviously we do things like have a rope on the front, so you can pull it, things like that. Cool, let's go find our wood. All right, so I think I found something for the base. Um, I had some of these old uh, floorboards kicking around. They are tongue and grooves, they slot into each other. Extra bit of strength there. They are light, flexible, shiny on the bottom, speed. But on this surface, it's got this nice sort of, uh, it's like a fabric. It's nice and soft. I think it's worked quite well. Now they're a composite material, which means it's layer glued on another layer, uh, which actually forms quite a strong uh, product. So um, although it can bend, that's actually pretty strong. So as long as you get the right frame on this and attach them properly, I think we're on to a winner. Okay, so I thought of a slight variation as well that we need to consider, which if I didn't, then it would have been probably a hospital time for the kids. And that is looking at the side of it. The front end needs to come up like this. 
obviously that snow is going to be sort of piling in here and it wants to divert down and underneath keeping that front end up so that that rise there that distance there by let's go for 90 millimeters three inches or thereabouts that's actually that's 75 millimeters anyway we, we'll go for we'll go for 75 millimeters not three inches so that's where it's going to, so that's where this is going to the board's going to kink it's going to go like that so this side side chamfer that's a tongue twister will come along here and come up like that with this board coming like that as well as it happens, um, I don't know if you guys have been following me lately, but I'm building a desk out of Sapili hardwood and I accidentally ordered the wrong measurement. This is going to be the front drawers. So this is spare, cracking. Might be a bit expensive, but uh, I mean, if you've got a plank of softwood, that's fine. So that's what I'm going to use for the side wall and skid arrangement. So now I need to just get the dimensions right for this. And we're going to draw this to scale. That's 1.2 long. Okay, so that's my board, 100 millimeters thick. And what we need to do is create that ramp going at the end there. So that would be 0.08 meters, or 80 mil, or just over, or just about three inches. So that's it. So we've got a golden three inches there. Um, you could take that the wrong way. Okay, so the first thing we do is we'll cut the full, these at full length at 1.2 and we obviously need one either side, so we cut two of them. Alright, so uh, when it's sort of late at night, 1 o'clock in the morning, I think in this example or thereabouts, um, you obviously want to be conscious of your neighbours and uh, any loud machinery. Uh, so just make sure that uh, you put the machine onto quiet mode. Uh, I find these help. And I'll just take quiet mode off. There we go. So everything's a bit louder now. Don't want to wake them up. That's one. Back onto quiet mode. We'll go like that up to the top there. So we need to leave 20 mil below or thereabouts for the skid, um, and obviously we don't want it to come to a sharp point anyway. I can't see that being a good thing. Now I need to do it on the other side. It's not going to be a replica. It's not going to start there and go up that way. Uh, yes, it will. What am I talking about? So I'm just going to do it on the other side as well, and then I'll get those cut. All right. So I've got my handheld circular saw. Let's put that on quiet mode. Goggles on, quiet mode on. So now we have the start of a skid. It's getting pretty cold. So now we're going to make the groove along the edge of the um, side board for the um, bottom board to slot into for extra strength. I've got a router, router, whatever, however you call it to do that. So I'm going to make the groove using the router, router. Just a quick one on the setup. That's a nine mil bit, which is the same thickness as the board here. So it should slot in nicely. Um, I've also put a guide here that is the 20 mil from here to the edge of that. That is the 20 mil back this board here, distance from the bottom of the board to the start of where the groove will be effectively, because that's what the, the bottom board sits into. Anyway, we just get that cut, both of them routed out. We start assembling the thing. Goggles on, quiet mode on. You can see the groove from 5mm deep don't want to go too deep otherwise it will affect the robustness of this plank which is basically holding the lot together moving up here we've got the kink going up there a little bit of a wobble but hey hey so that's what these boards will slot into hopefully this is the test nice tight and with some wood glue that'll be good it's time to make a cup of tea Nice 
smooth edge. Okay, so I've cut the pieces, trimmed off all the edges, cut the uh, tops here where it's going to kink, like so. Um, and now I can just sort of dry assemble them. In other words, assemble them without glue. That sort of slots in there, like so. And then we get the top piece, and that'll slot into there. And that's sort of forming a bit of a kink there for the ramp at the front. Okay, so we've got our two boards turned upside down. So the shiny, um, slippery side is on the underside. This is a sideboard. So we're actually going to glue this together, glue and screw it. Okay, so we really have gone to town with the glue here. Okay, so really sort of sealing it up with the wood glue there. Um, top definitely bottom is on, on the underside. Um, you want that joint sealed up nicely, so just spread that wood glue along. Next up, we're going to drill and screw four by 30 mil screws. That's these little things. We're going to pre-drill it with two and a half mil drill bit. Switch the drill bit for a uh, deburrer. It means the head of the screw can go right into the wood. That side rail, because it's screwed, is now per uh, well fixed to Now we do the same on the other side. All right, so that's the two side uh, bits on, and you can see how it's starting to take shape. Basically, it's upside down, and look how shiny that is. That's going to slide down the hill. Right. Anyway, next step is put the kettle on. So we're going to do next this back part here because remember these two bits here, this join running along here, that's not glued yet. So uh, the reason it's not glued yet is because I want to make this back part so that it keeps that from wobbling there. Okay, so that slots in there nicely. And we'll just screw through that the same way we did through here to fix that on place. Put it back together. Once we've got a good coating of glue in there, there is a lot of glue. Two taps. Probably shouldn't be using your finger for this, but hey, hey. Squeeze it on. And the screws I've used for this are Four by uh, five by forty. Nicely screwed on. See how these screw heads are nice and flush. So it'll reduce drag if you don't want them poking out and dragging in the snow or soil. And that is the back, very firmly attached. Okay. Time to do the front. We'll fit this in place. Then we do the same the other side. Alright, so that's slotted into position now. We just need to screw it. I'm not going to cover that, it's just the same as screwing the other sides. Okay, so I've just cut a, not a bit of wood here, notched on the end like that, notched on the other end, and that should just slot in there nicely. There's a notch, so it's meant to go like that. Spot that in. Okay, so there's one more weak spot which we need to sort out, and that's this joint here. This is the front ramp. See how we screwed that on? 
staggered screws, very nice. And we've got this bit here. Now if I hold the camera there, the snow is going to come down this way and it's going to hit the bottom poking out just there. So we need to put, oh, there's one already, a batten in there. Okay, so that's that bit on. Uh, you can see the screw holes here. Uh, then what we do is we'll leave it in the house where it's not minus 10 and uh, I'll probably get about two hours sleep. What time is it? Um, 9.44. Okay, so it's 9.44 on the Sunday. I woke up five minutes ago. I've had like two hours, three hours sleep. Yeah. Um, what do you think it's said so far, guys? Good. Good. I mean, you don't have that cup holder. Ah. Oh. Yeah, cup holder's missing, but you know. Yeah. Good. You're worse than Simon Cow. Sand down these rails to make it super quick. WD-40 on the bottom to make it super quick. And uh, I'm going to tie a rope to the front, because you, you've got to have a rope when putting the sled along, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, it'll, it'll go crazy. It will go crazy, yeah. Alright, cool, let's do that. P60 with a sanding block and just give that a good old sand. Right, that's all sanded down now, so um, sanded the top bits down for the kids' safety. But more importantly, really sand down the bottom of those rails just to get it that speed up, get it nice and smooth. You want it to go right down the snow. Where's my tape? It's gone. It's gone. It's one. Two. And there we have it guys, we have a sledge, a sled, however you want to call it, which features side rails made from Sapedi hardwood, bottom flooring made from composite flooring planks, which is super strong, super light, with an extra shiny bottom layer, stain proof as they claim, it's a Pergo one, with the top of this being made from, it's like a felt on the top, so it's nice and comfy. A rope, we've got a back bit there. Stops for the feet, the person sitting at the back, there's a stop for her foot there as well. It's a nice shape, look at that, and we're good to go. So, I'm gonna make myself my fifth coffee, just so I'm on tip top. Uh, I can't even get my words out, I'm too tired. So anyway, we're gonna go sledging. So that's the end of this how to. The next bit will be about sledging. Test number one, see if it pulls along the snow, courtesy of Ali. Yeah, bit heavy. Good bit of feedback there, guys. On the set, Charlie. Hi right, girls, so you've had a go on the sled, it seems to work, what's your verdict? Oh, uh, good. What do you, what do you... Is it good, bad? Yes. Good yeah. points, bad points? Yes, it's Great. It's really fast, though it's really heavy. Cool. Yeah. That's the result. High five. It's really good. Ah. High five. Cool. Yeah. And that folks is why it was worth making a sledge to a half five this morning.